I like it. It's like hitting a reset button, and then they get ready for the grind. Yeah, and I think it it uh, you know takes a little pressure off of them as far as what they do with the roster, mm-hmm. massaging it. If there's going to be any massaging going on between right. somebody that's off a waiver wire on another football team, uh-huh. or whether it's a guy in a trade situation, because you're not in game week right then. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as they have to make the cuts. So uh, I think that's a good thing. I also think that having two weeks. From the last action, from an injury situation, is mm-hmm. a plus as well. Yeah, and we'll go back because they needed to see the first team go down the field, make plays offensively, and then also do some things defensively. And you know, we're going to throw some grades out, or at least kind of what we thought over the three exhibition games. But let's get to the biggest, you know, the fifty-three man. So here we are, Facebook Live. You guys that are watching it live know that we have to wait until 4 o'clock before things become official. And then those that are watching it a little bit later on, you're like, hey, Joe, come on, man. That guy's already on the team. You know, <laughs> We don't know that as of right now. Right. But show them your sheet. You had all your stuff put together. And so you've been working on all your numbers, okay? And then I tweeted out yesterday what my 53 was. I got clobbered because I was cutting Parker Washington and Caleb on chase on. I had Jordan Smith on this team. I had seven wide receivers on this team. Some things I got right, some things I got terribly wrong. Doesn't mean I'm a bad GM or a good GM. It's, no. just, it's just putting out an and, opinion. And you're not getting paid to make exactly. that uh, call. Just, yeah, exactly. It's just putting out an opinion. But I do think Caleb on chase has got a ton to prove. I think Parker Washington, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he is an absolute must-have on this football team. And I would say that Elijah Cooks is a guy who established himself as a bigger wide receiver that I think Doug Peterson covets on this football team? Well, I think that, first of all, uh, you know, Parker Washington, I don't think he's necessarily a must-have or a Mm must-go. Right. You know, I think he's he's somebody that has a future in the league and, you know, uh, where that fits. Elijah Cooks has been on my team for Mm -hmm. a long time here now because, I mean, he made plays all the way through training camp. Yeah. And, you know, I, I I call those guys between he and Williams and and Hayes. Right. You know I call those guys the giraffes because they're they're, they're tall, rangy, long armed, mm-hmm. uh, and smooth athletes that can yeah. run. And uh, I'm in your corner. Mm-hmm. I had uh, Elijah Cooks making the team. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how they were going to do it. The way I had mentioned uh, earlier uh, off the show mm-hmm. is that. That uh, I thought that the running back in the tight end position was two that they could play around with. Right. Whether or not to keep four in either one of those situations would might lend themselves mm-hmm. to having seven yeah. receivers, yeah. and I, that's what kind of happened. It looks like. I think the one thing that you got you kind of caught me off guard with is you know the whole idea that Doug Peterson likes tight ends, yet he only needs three tight ends right. at the very least. Right now, he only needs three tight ends, and. We'll get into the you know some of the reasons that have been put out there as to why, but why do you think he'll be okay with just three tight ends? Well, first of all, you know the fourth tight end doesn't play, mm-hmm. and the, and the good thing is that I believe uh, Prince will mm-hmm. be able to go to the practice squad. Yeah, Garrett is Prince it? was released, so I think that's his fourth tight end. And mm-hmm. if something happens, you, you know you bring him on. Right. Uh, I think that's going to be their philosophy. I really felt from from day one. The Washington thing was kind of either or, you know, mm-hmm. as we've just said, mm-hmm. okay, I felt that they were going to keep Tim Jones. If they kept Washington, they were mm-hmm. going to keep Tim Jones as a receiver because yeah. of the special teams. But I felt that they felt that one or two of those giraffes might make the yeah. practice squad. Well, they didn't want to lose Cooks, it looks like. Mm-hmm. So at this point right now, he's with the roster, which is, in my opinion, a plus. And the tight end situation, I think they're okay with three. Yeah. And you know, one point that I want to make, just as far as Parker Washington is concerned, is if you're taking a look at the wide receiving group, and I think you and I both agree that they wanted to get a little more height if they could. Like right. you said, the giraffes, 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", those three guys that we talked about. But the other part of this is when the Jags put out their depth chart, this doesn't mean it's gospel, but at the wide receiver slot position, they have Christian Kirk, Jamal Agnew, then Parker Washington. That screams to me, you know, Jamal Agnew is a playmaker, and he can do a lot of different things in space with the ball in his hands. So that's why I started to look, and I'm like, 
Christian Kirk is going to be out there a ton. If they need to spell him, Jamal Agnew is going to be the first right. guy up. Correct. And you're right on that. And and to be honest with you, the way the return game is evolving mm-hmm. with trying to help with the safety of the kickoffs and all that right. stuff, right. his role is still going to be, he's going to be an outstanding returner because they're going to get some returns. Right. But his role is going to be exactly what you said, mm-hmm. Agnew I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. He's going to be that fourth receiver yeah. that can be in that slot position and can do some things with the with the running game. Yeah. Uh can, you know with the fly the sweeps jet and the, sweep, the yeah. jet sweeps, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Uh so I think you're absolutely right on that and that's why I looked at Washington from the beginning. I don't want to say expendable, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure what the word is, but it's not a must have uh-huh. or a must go. Must go. I, I like the way you put that because it's not like you look at him and go, why did they even draft yeah, him? I, he yeah. is a he is a good player, did a lot of good things up at Penn State, but he still is a 5'11 guy that weighs around 200 pounds. And he's got but he does have good feet. He's mm-hmm. an athlete. He mm-hmm. can be a returner. He can yeah. I'm sure he can do some things on special teams because he's a a stout 5'11. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's he's put together. Mm-hmm. Uh so that's, you know, I, I think this was more about keeping Cooks, yeah, because I think Cooks did everything that he could do to make this football team, and he gives them something that they don't have at the other receivers. Okay, so you guys might be looking at what the fifty-three looks like right now, and these are the things that I want a coach to bring up, which I think are important. Uh, we mentioned three tight ends, how you can get away with that, even though you may see plenty of double tight ends uh, formationally. But let's go to the running back room, and I believe four guys are there. You believe four guys are there. Now, help me out here, because I don't think you had four active running backs last season, whereas you might have four active running backs this season because of everything they represent. Yeah, well, the special teams, yeah. Dearness Johnson and Hasty yeah. are special teams yeah. guys. Important. And that's huge. And I think Hasty they really, really like as a third down. Mm-hmm. guy out of the backfield, not only because he can catch the ball, right. but because he's shifty enough to r- run it on third down, and he's a good blocker. And I think that's important. So, yeah. uh, you know, to me, the four will definitely be used. I think they'll all be active. Right. I really do uh, in that a- and aspect. So we already had an inactive tight end. And again, we're just guessing numbers. Coach Campo has gone from head coach to GM now. So why do you, th- or how do you think they'll work the numbers game day to where they would have four running backs? Where do they limit their options maybe in some of the other position rooms? Well, first of all, let me make sure you understand that just like you're not getting paid to be, <laughs> I'm not getting paid to be the GM either. If they want to pay me, I'm, then I'm available. Ready. Then Believe you're ready. me. Uh, it, I think that first of all, you look at the the roster and the and the fourth running back mm-hmm. is probably not going to play. Mm-hmm. So I'm talking about as a as a running back. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, they will, in my mind, Hasty will be the third guy because of his his third down ability. Okay. The Ernest Johnson is going to be one that they will activate or not activate based on how they need to put everything together. Okay. So to me, you, you look at it and you look at the roster and you say, well, uh, you know, uh, they, they may not have six DBs, mm-hmm. corners. That drafted, particular game. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, drafted, mm-hmm. uh, uh, active. Mm-hmm. They'll look at different positions and say, you know, here's what we need. We're, we're healthy in this one. Mm-hmm. We need an extra guy here. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how they're going to work it, right. but I know that uh, you know obviously you can only have forty eight, and yeah. and they're just going to have to fit it in based on their roles on who has the most and, uh, ability for that week. Yeah, and the other thing is is that uh, you know I believe that we've seen enough evidence of the way the game is played that you have to play a ton more in nickel than you have to right. do in base. So that's why I'm looking at a total of eleven. Secondary players. I think you have eleven secondary right. players because you need Trey Herndon and Gregory Jr. playing in that nickel. You need uh, Tyson Campbell and Darius Williams with quality backups. Right. Now, right now, Coach, they have Monteric Brown making this team, and they do not have Tavon Campbell making this team. 
uh, they they released not subject to waivers. They released Chandler Brewer, Tavon Campbell, Michael Dogby, Bobby Evans, uh, Quadre Allison. Allison at least caught a nice pass from Nathan Rourke. He did. So he's got some tape on him. You like Tavon, and I don't know yeah. whether this is the end of the road for him. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I did a. I really studied this last game mm-hmm. because you know they had Braswell in there, mm-hmm. and they had Monteric, and they had. Uh, Tavon Campbell mm-hmm. in there a lot in the game. And I can see why they made the move, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. I wasn't completely convinced on Monteric. I thought that uh, Tavon Campbell brought experience to that group. Mm-hmm. But I, I think Monteric made the team in that ball game, to be honest with you. I think they went with a younger player mm-hmm. that has growth, that can run, uh, and has has done some things coming in a year ago, two right. years ago, whatever, when he last yeah, two year years was ago, in college yeah. Yeah. And, and, mm-hmm. at, uh, in the SEC, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, he's shown that he can make some plays. Mm-hmm. So I, I think that, you know, rather than take a five, fifth year guy on mm-hmm. a guy that probably will be inactive that makes sense. On, on game day, mm-hmm. uh, they went with a younger player. And yeah. I think that I, can, I could see why that would happen. Yeah, and that makes sense. And he does represent a little special teams for you as well. Right. And the other thing is, is if you go back to his, I believe it was Ole Miss, you go back to his Ole Miss days, he led the SEC in picks that right. year. Right. And they said goodbye to Caleb Hayes. They said goodbye to Eric Hallett. Hallett did make a pick, made right. a play the right. other night. right. And I had Braswell making the team. So of these guys, you know, they drafted a bunch of guys. Yeah. But Braswell's the guy who was at least given the early I think Braswell, I knew Braswell was going to make it because he played a corner. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the game, he played nickel. Yeah. So That's he's a, a guy key. that is, it can go either way. Uh, and, and really, to be honest with you, uh, I thought he probably played the best. When I look at Hallett, you know, even the interception, I think he's a good special. A, a uh, what do you call it? A, mm-hmm. Like the the extra guys, yeah. the sixteen. Whatever. Right. I, I've lost my. Oh, mind. the practice squad. practice yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I think he's a. Pardon hey, listen, me, guys. I, one I'm getting day, a little older. One but, day, coach and I are going to go play password, and yeah. we are going to show you just how good we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, he's he's good for that. Yeah. But the interception he made, he was not in good position originally, yeah. and the guy yeah. scrambled. Yeah, there you go. You know that he had a he was going up with the receiver, and he was a little bit behind it, and then he came the, off. This with is the classic defensive so, coach. Would know. You know, yeah. uh, I, I think that. The one thing I liked about Hallett, though, is they had him play some corner mm-hmm. and they had him play some safety. Mm-hmm. In that game, he played mostly safety. Okay. So, you know, he'll go to the practice squad and and uh, I think they kept the right guy. All right. So hit your linebackers, coach. Guys that, that you thought, guys that did make it, because right now we're, we're, we're at a 53, maybe even a 54-man count because we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Cooper Hodges. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. With Devon Hamilton, we mentioned seven wide receivers right now, uh, including Parker Washington, or or at the very least being being looked at as making this roster. So they still probably have one more decision to make. But what did you think of your linebackers? Well, I think the 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 fourth and fifth linebackers, uh, Caleb Johnson and mm-hmm. and and Quarterman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's limitations on Quarterman. You know, some of the decisions that could be made now going forward, Mm -hmm. that's another position where they could go with four linebackers, in my opinion. I think Caleb Johnson did enough with what he did on special teams and the way he ran around and made some plays to make the team. Uh, You know, uh, uh, due respect to Quarterman, Mm -hmm. I think Quarterman's a football player. He's tough. He's physical. He's experienced now. And he never takes, usually, his, never takes his mind off the game. Yeah, he's usually in the right spot, but mm-hmm. his athletic ability is limited. Mm-hmm. So to me, I think Ventrell Miller would have made the team over him yeah. if he had not gotten hurt. Yeah, so I'm sure to kill he's terrible news. So I think... You know, he brings something to the table because he's a football player and you don't want to let football players go. Right. But in reality, if something were to go with a trade or something where they needed a roster spot, I think uh, Shaq is probably the guy that that they could play with. And I'm a Miami guy all the way. Right. So I hate to say it. Oh, yeah. I want to give him due respect because he is a football player. Yeah. And he's from Oakleaf. He played four years here, four years at Miami. Right. Such a... 
good human being. Right. And like we said, his mind is always on ball. He wants right. to do the best right. he possibly can. Right. So we'll see where it goes. Bad news for Ventrell Miller, who at least flashed a little bit, but he goes from a Jones fracture, which is a fairly significant foot injury, right. surgery in February on that, and now has a ruptured Achilles. Yeah. It's just terrible. Yeah, it's too now, bad. We haven't mentioned what will happen with Dewan Smoot. That will be four, four games into this. He'll come off the pup list. And they'll make a decision then. Not even guaranteeing that he'll have a spot because that injury was all the way in late December. And the one guy that we always compare to timeline-wise and injury-wise is James Robinson. Right. James Robinson just got let go from another team, unfortunately, yeah. just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. So when they look at three tight ends and Cooper Hodges maybe being designated for uh, going to IR, designated for return later, we'll find out. Right. How many offensive line do you think that they need or will have on the 50s? Well, I think they'll have nine total, mm -hmm. but I think they'll, uh, you know, they won't dress nine. Uh, right. they, they, they'll have nine. And you're talking about Little, Barch, Fortner, Sheriff, Harrison, Shatley's going to make the team. There's a little concern there with mm -hmm. the AFib situation. Right. Uh, Hans uh, is kind of a swing guy in yeah. a number of different positions. Van Lannan is probably their swing tackle right now. Yeah, because he has not been waived. Right. And then you got Hodges. And so he's probably going to go. Uh, he had to make the 53 in order to come back this year. Yeah. And I think he, uh, like Caleb Johnson, did enough to make this football team. Very true. And, and you know, I, I'm, I think he's going to be a pretty good offensive lineman before yeah. it's through. So uh, something's going to happen there. They'll probably put him on IR. And now they're going to have to do something there, you know, and, and that's what you're talking about, the 53 change in here. Yeah. There. And I, I think it's it's great news when you see the potential of a guy. You hate that he has to deal with an injury, right. but Cooper Hodges flashed. Like we talked about, you mentioned Caleb Johnson, some of the guys that flashed on one side of the ball or the other. Jeremiah Ledbetter flashed the last couple of games. Right. Cooper Hodges was doing that before he got hurt. Absolutely. And I think, you know, you're talking about guys that – they, that made the roster mm -hmm. in this camp yeah. and what they did. Caleb Johnson, Elijah Cooks, mm -hmm. Hodges, Ledbetter. Yeah. Those guys made the football team. The draft guys mm -hmm. like Abdullah mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, Lacey, mm -hmm. I'm not sure that they did as much as show some flashes. Yeah, you're right. But the other guys we're talking about there did a lot during mm -hmm. camp. Uh, Tyler Lacey is a little bit of a, an enigma, not quite sure. I think he does. He's at least done a few things at right. times. Right. But I'm going, uh, did not play this last game, right. and, but was dressed and apparently is going to be in practice today. I believe that's what Mia said earlier. And so... He's a guy that they need to get something out of. Let, right. let, let's go to the interior part of that line. They need to make sure they get they they identify players that can crash the boards and get to the quarter or yeah. affect the quarterback. Well, I think he uh, again. Uh, I liked him. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, watching him in yeah. camp because he's big and he's athletic. Yeah, and he is a guy that I think could be a pass rusher with development from inside. Yeah. From inside. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, to me, I think he's. I mean, I'm glad he's on the team. Mm -hmm. Everybody was kind of saying Vohasic was, you know, because of the injury to uh, to a Hamilton mm -hmm. yeah. or, or yeah. whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I yeah, don't know what Devon. it is. Yeah. It's uh, off the field. Right. Uh, you know, I thought he might make a chance uh, chance to make it, but I, I think Lacey's a better mm -hmm. prospect okay. than Vohasic is. And so Vohasic could end up, here's what happens, and... We can go through the minutia, but you know, a fan can find out pretty quickly that basically, depending on years of service, you have to go through waivers. If you're not claimed yet, you're eligible to get back on the or be signed to the practice squad, and you can have a total of 16, which is pretty good. Right. We went from 10 to 12 to now 16, which I think is huge. Uh, and so there's a chance that you can get guys back. I don't know if Jordan Smith is a practice squad guy here. But I liked him. I wanted him yep. to make the squad. He yep. didn't. So there's going to be some of these guys that by noon on Wednesday, Wednesday right. will be able to at least have a chance to come back. Here. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I think that's one of the great things about what they've done here. Uh, I heard Matt uh, Hayes make a, a comment on, on the primetime show mm -hmm. about 
w- w- how this roster has transformed from right. two years ago oh. to where it is right now. And and the great thing about this roster is that there are going to be guys on this roster that when they go to practice squad, they're just not guys to to you know give guys to practice against during the week. Right. There's some guys on this group that can be developed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a real plus. And to have 16 guys, that's a real plus yeah. in itself. Yeah, it's massive. And that's why I would give the Leadbetters of the world, the princes of the world, right. heck, even go back uh, to other guys that have stepped up, either a J-Rob, uh, a, a Trey Herndon. Yeah. There are a lot of undrafted guys yeah. that, that can stick. And you and you look at uh, Jordan Smith. Uh, you know, I mm-hmm. felt uh, he did some things mm-hmm. in camp. Uh, but I, I felt that there you could see a little hitch in his get along. Mm-hmm. Well, nothing says that if he comes back on the practice squad that a year from now that leg might be yeah. not an issue. Yeah, can't he, he can keep getting healthier and healthier. Yeah, right? Now he's developing, he's long, he's he, you know, he's pretty athletic. And mm-hmm. I would wanted to see him from the beginning when we first talked oh, about yeah. who do you want to look at in camp. I just think the hitch in the get along is what got yeah. him in the end. By the way, Coach Campo came up with that hitch in the get along when he was in Dallas. Yeah. Okay. That, that that's that's a good southern that's right. That, I got my old uh, cowboy days. That's me. a lone star state. One of these days I'm gonna wear a cowboy hat in here. <laughs> like, but I'm definitely a Jaguar guy, so don't yeah. let, don't get me wrong. Exactly. Even though we have our bobbleheads. Yeah. You have to hit your bobblehead. Yeah, yeah, I got my bobblehead. Even though that might, yeah, yeah, might yeah, yeah. have a little cowboy look to it. Don't even worry about that. <laughs> he's he's all, all of Duval now. Yeah. Uh, all right, so let's wrap this up because there could be other players on other teams. This football team has at least constructed a roster right now where other teams are going to be looking here to see who they may, they may like. But it's not impossible to think, and I'll just use a lineman, and a pass rusher, an yep. edge guy, is two guys that they'll be looking for out there right now. Yeah, and I think it's a little more diff- difficult off the waiver wire. Mm-hmm. They might be able to trade for somebody, mm-hmm. though, at this point. Mm-hmm. Off the waiver wire, the problem you have is that we're way down now. Sure. You know, we're like at 20, uh, whatever. Unfamiliar territory. Yeah, yeah, we're down in the 20s. I don't know what number it is, mm-hmm. but we're in the 20s. Yeah. And so, you know, some guys could be, but again, it, it that doesn't mean that we can't get somebody there mm-hmm. because there's some guys that are set that are not going to take a guy that can help us. Right. And and vice versa. There are some guys that, you know, that they may take from us mm-hmm. that, you know, that are, are uh, you know, that they need. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But I think we've got a pretty good roster, a solid roster. Uh, do we need a pass rusher? Probably. Mm-hmm. I think they'll be looking for it, whether it's in a trade or or off the wire, and, and we'll see what happens. And then the lineman part of it, they did put Josh Wells on injured reserve. They didn't give him an injury settlement to where he could possibly come back later. Right. He's on injured reserve. He's gone for the year along with Ventrell Miller. And you're looking around and you're just going to see if a guy like that might be available uh, on someone else's squad where they can bring him in. And then the fact that Yasir Abdullah made this squad, uh, let's finish up with your idea of what they're going to try and do defensively and why he may be, like I came away from this last game, a lot more excited about Yasir Abdullah right. than the first couple of weeks. Well, because he's versatile. I mean, you know, he's he can he can rush, he can drop. You know, he, as a special teams guy, he should be pretty good because he's got athletic ability and speed. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that uh, if they're going to go to a zone, zone pressure type uh, attack, which I believe they are with the personnel they have, Mm -hmm. he's the type of guy that can be in that situation. And maybe even, you know, he looked the best this past weekend coming up underneath. Right. You know, and I mean, on the move, not Mm -hmm. lined up in there because he's too small to line up in there. but. Coming up underneath, doing those sort of things, those are what zone pressures do. And that's scheming and stunting. Right. And he also has the ability, when he comes around the edge, he does have a little bit of dip and rip, Mm -hmm. you know, which you need as a pass rusher. So he has a little bit of uh, naturalness to him. So I think it's, uh, you know, we'll see how long it goes, but Mm -hmm. I think he can develop, to be honest with you. And if they do get guys to make plays out of the back end of the draft, that's huge. And it might be. Might be Parker Washington yeah. in the sixth round. You see her a later draft pick. Who the right. heck knows? Tyler Lacey in the fourth round. So we'll see where they go. All right, Coach. Good stuff, man. We can't wait. We're now counting it down. Next week, it'll be game week. We'll be talking about those stinking Colts and how this team's going to go one and out of start. Plus, we'll know exactly what the roster is then going in. 
Exactly. XL Primetime, you can catch us noon to three weekdays. Always appreciate Coach's visit. Uh, We are out. Campo and Joe, as we say goodbye, hit that bobblehead. Enjoy.